German orthography, Wikipedia audio. German orthography is the orthography used in writing the German language, which is largely phonemic. However, it shows many instances of spellings that are historic or analogous to other spellings rather than phonemic. The pronunciation of almost every word can be derived from its spelling once the spelling rules are known, but the opposite is not generally the case. Today, German orthography is regulated by the Rat für Deutsche Rechtschreibung, composed of representatives from most German speaking countries. The modern German alphabet consists of the 26 letters of the ISO Basic Latin Alphabet. Alphabet German uses three letter diacritic combinations using the umlaut and one ligature or scarfs S, sharp S, which are officially considered distinct letters of the alphabet. Although the diacritic letters represent distinct sounds in German phonology, they are almost universally not considered to be part of the alphabet. Almost all German speakers consider the alphabet to have the 26 cardinal letters above and will name only those when asked to say the alphabet. A vowel in an open syllable is long, for instance in GE Ben, SHN, it is rare to see a bare I used to indicate a long vowel slash I slash. Instead, the digraph IE is used, for instance in LIEB, HIER. This use is a historical spelling based on the Middle High German diphthong slash I slash which was monophthongized in early New High German. It has been generalized to words that etymologically never had that diphthong, for instance VIEL, FRIED. Occasionally typically in word final position this digraph represents slash I slash as in the plural noun ni slash ni slash. In Fraktur, where capital I and J are identical or near identical, J, the combinations IE and JE are confusable, hence the combination IE is not used at the start of a word, for example I gel, I re. A silent H indicates the vowel length in certain cases. That H derives from an old slash X slash in some words, for instance SCHNZEHN, but in other words it has no etymological justification, for instance GEHN or MAHLEN. Occasionally a digraph can be redundantly followed by H, either due to analogy, such as SIEHT or etymology, such as VIH, RAH, the letters A, E, O are doubled in a few words that have long vowels, for instance SAAT, SEE, MOOR, a doubled consonant after a vowel indicates that the vowel is short, while a single consonant often indicates the vowel is long, e.g., COM has a short vowel slash CHEM slash while chem has a long vowel slash com slash dot, k and z are not doubled, but instead replaced by ck and tz. However, until the spelling reform of 1996, ck was divided across a line break as kk, for different consonants and for sounds represented by more than one letter after a vowel, no clear rule can be given because they can appear after long vowels, yet are not redoubled if belonging to the same stem, e.g. mon slash mon slash moon, hand slash hand slash hand. On a stem boundary, reduplication usually takes place, e.g., nimti takes, however, in fixed, no longer productive derivatives, this too can be lost, e.g., Geschafft slash ft slash business despite schaffen to get something done. Dot. SS indicates that the preceding vowel is long, e.g. Strasse Street vs. Masse amount. In addition to that, texts written before the 1996 spelling reform also use SS at the ends of words and before consonants, e.g. Naswet and Musaint had to, 
so vowel length in these positions could not be detected by the SS, CF. Mass measure and fussaint was based. The diacritic letters A, O, and U are used to indicate the presence of umlauts. Before the introduction of the printing press, Frontalization was indicated by placing an E after the back vowel to be modified, but German printers developed the space-saving typographical convention of replacing the full E with a small version placed above the vowel to be modified. In German current writing, the superscript E was simplified to two vertical dashes, which have further been reduced to dots in both handwriting and German typesetting. Although the two dots of umlaut look like those in the diaresis, the two have different functions. When it is not possible to use the umlauts the characters A, O, U, A, O, U should be transcribed as A, E, O, E, U, E, A, E, O, E, U, E respectively, following the earlier post-vocalic E convention. Simply using the base vowel would be wrong and misleading. However, such transcription should be avoided if possible, especially with names. Names often exist in different variants, such as Muller and Mueller, and with such transcriptions in use one could not work out the correct spelling of the name. Automatic back transcribing is not only wrong for names. Consider for example, Das Neue Book. This should never be changed to Das New Book, as the second E is completely separate from the U and does not even belong in the same syllable, Neue is new followed by an E, an inflection. The word new does not exist in German. Furthermore, in Northern and Western Germany, there are family names and place names in which E lengthens the preceding vowel, as in the former Dutch orthography, such as Strelin, which is pronounced with a long A, not an A. Similar cases are Kosfeld and Bernkastelkus. In proper names and ethnonyms, there may also appear a rare E and I, which are not letters with an umlaut, but a diaresis used as in French to distinguish what could be a digraph, for example, AI in Karaman, EU in Aluden, IE in Ferdinand Peach, OE in Clemens von Lu and Bernhard Hoker, and UE in Niu. To separate the O diphthong, as well as some others, which are graphically composed of potentially umlaut holding letters, the acute accent is sometimes used. B, at end of syllable, otherwise, or, C, before A, E, and I, otherwise, CH, after A, O, and U, after other vowels or consonants or initially, or, the suffix Chen always. In Austro-Bavarian, especially in Austria, may always be substituted by, CHS within a morpheme badger, or across a morpheme boundary roof, ck, follows short vowels, d, at end of syllable, otherwise, or, dsch, or, used in loanwords and transliterations only. Words borrowed from English can alternatively retain the original j. Many speakers pronounce dsch as, because is not native to German, D, T, F, G, when part of word final I, G, or, at the end of a syllable, otherwise, or, H, before a vowel, when lengthening a vowel, silent, J, in most words, in loan words from French, K, L, M, N, N, G, usually, in compound words where the first element ends in N and the second element begins with G, or, N K, P, P F, in all cases with some speakers, with other speakers at the beginning of words and in all other cases, P H, CHU, or, R. The pronunciation of R varies regionally, 
before vowels, otherwise, or, after long vowels, otherwise, or, or before vowels, otherwise, or, in all cases. Swiss typewriters and computer keyboards do not allow easy input of uppercase letters with umlauts because their positions are taken by the most frequent French diacritics. Uppercase umlauts were dropped because they are less common than lowercase ones. Geographical names in particular are supposed to be written with A, O, U plus E except Erster Reich. The omission can cause some inconvenience since the first letter of every noun is capitalized in German. Unlike in Hungarian, the exact shape of the umlaut diacritics especially when handwritten is not important, because they are the only ones in the language. They will be understood whether they look like dots, acute accents, vertical bars, a horizontal bar, a brieve, a tiny n or e, a tilde, and such variations are often used in stylized writing. In the past, however, the brief was traditionally used in some scripts to distinguish a u from an n, as was the ring. In rare cases the n was underlined. The briefed u was common in some current derived handwritings, it was mandatory in Sutherland. A as in wasser water, a, as in manner men, e, as in bed bed, unstressed as in ox ox, i, as in middle means, o, as in common to come, o, as in god and goddess, u, as in mutter mother, u, as in muller miller, y, as in dystrophy dystrophy. Special Characters the az or scarf's s represents the unvoiced s sound. The German spelling reform of 1996 somewhat reduced usage of this letter in Germany and Austria. It is not used in Switzerland and Liechtenstein. As the ss derives from a ligature of lowercase letters, it is exclusively used in the middle or the end of a word. The proper transcription when it cannot be used is SS. This transcription can give rise to ambiguities, albeit rarely, one such case is in Masson versus in Masson. For all caps usage, an uppercase SS was added to the German alphabet on June 29, 2017, however, the former version SS is still allowed as an alternative. In 2008, it was included in Unicode 5.1 as U plus 1E9E, e, and since 2010 its use is mandatory in official documentation when writing geographical names in all caps. Although nowadays substituted correctly only by SS, the letter actually originates from two distinct ligatures, long S with round S and long S with Z. Some people therefore prefer to substitute SS by SZ, as it can avoid possible ambiguities. Incorrect use of the SS letter is a common type of spelling error even among native German writers. The spelling reform of 1996 changed the rules concerning SS and SS. This required a change of habits and is often disregarded. Some people even incorrectly assumed that the SS had been abolished completely. However, if the vowel preceding the S is long, the correct spelling remains SS. If the vowel is short, it becomes SS, e.g. ich denke, das. This follows the general rule in German that a long vowel is followed by a single consonant, while a short vowel is followed by a double consonant. This change towards the so-called Heise spelling, however, introduced a new sort of spelling error, as the long-slash-short pronunciation differs regionally. It was already mostly abolished in the late 19th century in favor of the Abel spelling that put focus on logical word ends. Besides the long-slash-short pronunciation issue, 
which can be attributed to dialect speaking, Heise's spelling also introduces reading ambiguities that do not occur with able spelling such as Prozessorentierung vs. Prozessorarchitektur. It is therefore recommended to insert hyphens where required for reading assistance, i.e. Prozessorarchitektur vs. Prozessorientierung. The use of hyphens here is, however, somewhat frowned upon as it is considered a dumbing down of the written language. In the Fraktur typeface and similar scripts, a long S was used except in syllable endings and sometimes it was historically used in Antiqua fonts as well, but it went out of general use in the early 1940s along with the Fraktur typeface. An example where this convention would avoid ambiguity is Watch Stube, which was written either Waktub equals Watch Stube, Guardhouse, or Watch Stube equals Wax Tube, Tube of Wax. There are three ways to deal with the umlauts in alphabetic sorting. Umlaut diacritic usage Sharp S Microsoft Windows in German versions offers the choice between the first two variants in its internationalization settings. As the final letter, followed by a single consonant as in bot offered, before a single consonant followed by a vowel as in wagon car, doubled as in boot boat, followed by an H as in web pane. Long S Sorting Features of German spelling Spelling of nouns Vowel length A sort of combination of no S1 and 2 also exists, in use in a couple of lexica, the umlaut is sorted with the base character, but an AE, OE, UE in proper names is sorted with the umlaut if it is actually spoken that way. A possible sequence of names then would be Mukovic, Muller, Muller, Mueller, Maltman in this order. A, A, an A, 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 or, E, A, an E, E, I, I, E, I, H, an E, O, O, an O, 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 colon, U and A, U and A, colon, Y. A Z is sorted as though it were SS. Occasionally it is treated as S, but this is generally considered incorrect. Words distinguished only by SS versus SS can only appear in the Heiser writing and are even then rare and possibly dependent on local pronunciation, but if they would appear, the word with SS gets precedence, and Geschoss would be sorted before Geschoss. Under the Habsburg dynasty, there was a strong tendency to a common language in the Chancellery, since Eastern Central Germany had been colonized only during the High and Late Middle Ages in the course of the Ostseedlung by people from different regions of Germany, the varieties spoken were compromises of different dialects, Eastern Central Germany was culturally very important being home to the universities of Erfurt and Leipzig and especially with the Luther Bible translation, which was considered exemplary, the invention of printing led to an increased production of books, and the printers were interested in using a common language to sell their books in an area as wide as possible. Accents in French loanwords are always ignored in collation. Double or triple consonants in rare contexts SCH and likewise ST and CH are treated as single letters, but the vocalic digraph say I, EI, O, O, EU and the historic UI and OI never are. A typical feature of German spelling is the general capitalization of nouns and of most nominalized words. Compound words, including nouns, are written together e.g. Hoster, Tischlamp, Kaltwasserhahn. This can lead to long words, the longest word in regular use, Riechschutzversicherungsgeselschaffen, consists of 39 letters, 
while the longest German word ever published has 79 letters. Even though vowel length is phonemic in German, it is not consistently represented. However, there are different ways of identifying long vowels. Even though German does not have phonemic consonant length, there are many instances of doubled or even tripled consonants in the spelling. A single consonant following a checked vowel is doubled if another vowel follows, for instance immer always, la ssn let. These consonants are analyzed as ambisyllabic because they constitute not only the syllable onset of the second syllable but also the syllable coda of the first syllable, which must not be empty because the syllable nucleus is a checked vowel. By analogy, if a word has one form with a doubled consonant, all forms of that word are written with a doubled consonant, even if they do not fulfill the conditions for consonant doubling. For instance, re n n n to run e r re n n t he runs, ku s s e kisses ku s s kiss. However, German does have consonant length. If the two consonants stem from the two parts of a composite word, e.g., Schaffel has a long f. Typical letters by the same composition. Consonants can possibly be tripled, while this is a sign that the consonant is actually in all cases spoken long, it does not affect the pronunciation per se, the FFF in Sauerstoflask is exactly as long as the FF in Schaffel. According to the spelling before 1996, the three consonants would be shortened before vowels, but retained before consonants and in hyphenation. So the word skifferite was then written skifferite with equal pronunciation. With the aforementioned change in SS spelling, even a new source of triple consonants SSS, which in pre-1996 spelling could not occur as it was rendered SSS, was introduced, e.g. must spiel. EI, this digraph represents the diphthong slash a slash. The spelling goes back to the Middle High German pronunciation of that diphthong, which was. The spelling AI is found in only a very few native words but is commonly used to Romanize slash A slash in foreign loans from languages such as Chinese. Foreign words EU, this digraph represents the diphthong which goes back to the Middle High German monophthong represented by IU. When the sound is created by umlaut of O, it is spelled O. SS, this letter alternates with SS. For more information, see above. Grapheme to phoneme correspondences. Consonants. Vowels. ST, SP. At the beginning of the main syllable of a word, these digraphs are pronounced. In the Middle Ages, the sibilant that was inherited from Proto Germanic slash s slash was pronounced as an alveolopalatal consonant, or unlike the voiceless alveolar sibilant slash s slash that had developed in the High German consonant shift. In the Late Middle Ages, certain instances of merged with slash s slash but others developed into. The change to was represented in certain spellings such as SCH NA SNOW, KIRSCHE CHERRY. The digraphs ST, SP, however, remained unaltered. V, the letter V occurs only in a few native words and then, it represents slash F slash. That goes back to the 12th and 13th century, when pre-vocalic slash f slash was voiced to. The voicing was lost again in the late Middle Ages, but the v still remains in certain words such as in v-ogle bird, v-i-e-l much. w, the letter w represents the sound slash v slash. In the 17th century, the former sound became but the spelling remained the same. 
An analogous sound change had happened in late antique Latin. Z, the letter Z represents the sound slash ts slash. The sound, a product of the High German consonant shift, has been written with Z since Old High German in the 8th century. For technical terms, the foreign spelling is often retained such as ph slash f slash or y slash y slash in the word physic of Greek origin. For some common affixes however, like graphy or photo, it is allowed to use graphy or photo instead. Both photography and photography are correct, but the mixed variants photography or photography are not. For other foreign words, both the foreign spelling and a revised German spelling are correct such as Delphin slash Delphin or Portemonnaie slash Portemonnaie, though in the latter case the revised one does not usually occur. For some words for which the Germanized form was common even before the reform of 1996, the foreign version is no longer allowed. A notable example is the word photo, with the meaning photograph, which may no longer be spelled as photo. Other examples are telephone which was already Germanized as telephone some decades ago or bureau which got replaced by the Germanized version bureau even earlier. Except for the common sequences SCH, CH, or NCK the letter C appears only in loanwords or in proper nouns. In many loanwords, including most words of Latin origin, the letter C pronounced has been replaced by K. Alternatively, German words which come from Latin words with C before E, I, Y, A, E. OE are usually pronounced with and spelled with Z. However, certain older spellings occasionally remain, mostly for decorative reasons, such as circus instead of zirkus. The letter Q in German appears only in the sequence Chu except for loan words such as Coke Oven or Kigong. The letter X occurs almost exclusively in loan words such ALS xylophone and names, e.g. Alexander and Xantippe. Native German words now pronounced with a slash ks slash sound are usually written using chs or cks, as with Fuchs. Some exceptions occur such as Hexi, Niz, Axt, and Xanten. The letter Y occurs almost exclusively in loan words, especially words of Greek origin, but some such words have become so common that they are no longer perceived as foreign. It used to be more common in earlier centuries, and traces of this earlier usage persist in proper names. It is used either as an alternative letter for I, for instance in Mayer slash Meyer, or especially in the southwest, as a representation of that goes back to an old IJ, for instance in Schwitz or Schneider. Another notable exception is Bayern and derived words like Bayrisk, this actually used to be spelt with an I until the king of Bavaria introduced the Y as a sign of his Philhellenism. In loan words from the French language, spelling and accents are usually preserved. For instance, café in the sense of coffee house is always written café in German, accentless café would be considered erroneous, and the word cannot be written coffee, which means coffee. Thus, German typewriters and computer keyboards offer two dead keys, one for the acute and grave accents and one for circumflex. Other letters occur less often such as C in loan words from French or Portuguese, and N in loan words from Spanish. In one curious instance, the word ski is pronounced as if it were ski all over the German-speaking areas, but only written that way in Austria. This section lists German letters and letter combinations and how to pronounce them transliterated into the International Phonetic Alphabet. This is the pronunciation of Standard German. Note that the pronunciation of Standard German varies slightly from region to region. In fact, 
it is possible to tell where most German speakers come from by their accent in Standard German. Foreign words are usually pronounced approximately as they are in the original language. Double consonants are pronounced as single consonants, except in compound words. Consonants are sometimes doubled in writing to indicate the preceding vowel is to be pronounced as a short vowel. Most one-syllable words that end in a single consonant are pronounced with long vowels, but there are some exceptions such as an, das, es, in, mit, and von. The e in the ending n is often silent, as in bitten to ask, request. The ending er is often pronounced, but in some regions, people say or. The e in the ending l, e.g. tunnel, mortal mortar is pronounced short despite having just a single consonant on the end. A vowel usually represents a long sound if the vowel in question occurs. Long vowels are generally pronounced with greater tenseness than short vowels. The long vowels map as follows. The oldest known German texts date back to the 8th century. They were written mainly in monasteries and different local dialects of Old High German. In these texts, the letter Z along with combinations such as TZ, CZ, ZZ, SZ, or ZS was chosen to transcribe the sounds slash TS slash N slash S slash, which is ultimately the origin of the modern German letters Z, TZ, and SS. After the Carolingian Renaissance, However, during the reigns of the Ottonian and Salian dynasties in the 10th century and 11th century, German was rarely written, the literary language being almost exclusively Latin. Notke the German is a notable exception in his period, his German compositions not only are of high stylistic value, but also, his orthography is the first to follow a strictly coherent system. Only during the reign of the Hohenstaufen dynasty was there again significant production of German texts. Around the year 1200, there was a tendency towards a standardized Middle High German language and spelling for the first time, based on the Franconian, Swabian language of the Hohenstaufen court. However, that language was used only in the epic poetry and minsang lyric of the night culture. These early tendencies of standardization ceased in the interregnum after the death of the last Hohenstaufen king in 1254. Certain features of today's German orthography still date back to Middle High German, the use of the trigraph sch for slash slash and the occasional use of v for slash f slash because around the 12th and 13th century, the pre-vocalic slash f slash was voiced. In the following centuries, the only variety that showed a marked tendency to be used across regions was the Middle Low German of the Hansa Attic League based on the variety of Lübeck and used in many areas of northern Germany and indeed northern Europe in general. By the 16th century, a new inter-regional standard developed on the basis of the East Central German and Austro-Bavarian varieties. This was influenced by several factors. Mid-16th century Counter-Reformation reintroduced Catholicism to Austria and Bavaria prompting a rejection of the Lutheran language. Instead, a specific southern inter-regional language was used, based on the language of the Habsburg Chancellery. In northern Germany, the Lutheran East Central German replaced the Low German written language until the mid-17th century. In the early 18th century, the Lutheran standard was also introduced in the southern states and countries, Austria, Bavaria, and Switzerland, due to the influence of northern German writers, grammarians such as Johann Christoph Gottsched or language cultivation societies such as the Fruit-Bearing Society. Though, by the mid-18th century, 
one norm was generally established, there was no institutionalized standardization. Only with the introduction of compulsory education in late 18th and early 19th century was the spelling further standardized, though at first independently in each state because of the political fragmentation of Germany. Only the foundation of the German Empire in 1871 allowed for further standardization. In 1876, the Prussian government instituted the first orthographic conference to achieve a standardization for the entire German Empire. However, its results were rejected, notably by Prime Minister of Prussia Otto von Bismarck. In 1880, Gymnasium Director Konrad Duden published the Vollstandiges Orthographisches Wörterbuch der Deutschen Sprache, known simply as the Duden. In the same year, the Duden was declared to be authoritative in Prussia. Since Prussia was, by far, the largest state in the German Empire, its regulations also influenced spelling elsewhere, for instance, in 1894, when Switzerland recognized the Duden. In 1901, the Interior Minister of the German Empire instituted the Second Orthographic Conference. It declared the Duden to be authoritative, with a few innovations. In 1902, its results were approved by the governments of the German Empire, Austria, and Switzerland. In 1944, the Nazi German government planned a reform of the orthography, but because of World War II, it was never implemented. After 1902, German spelling was essentially decided de facto by the editors of the Duden dictionaries. After World War II, this tradition was followed with two different centers, Mannheim in West Germany and Leipzig in East Germany. By the early 1950s, a few other publishing houses had begun to attack the Duden monopoly in the West by putting out their own dictionaries, which did not always hold to the official spellings prescribed by Duden. In response, the ministers of culture of the federal states in West Germany officially declared the Duden spellings to be binding as of November 1955. The Duden editors used their power cautiously because they considered their primary task to be the documentation of usage, not the creation of rules. At the same time, however, they found themselves forced to make finer and finer distinctions in the production of German spelling rules, and each new print run introduced a few reformed spellings. The new orthography is mandatory only in schools. A 1998 decision of the Federal Constitutional Court of Germany confirmed that there is no law on the spelling people use in daily life, so they can use the old or the new spelling. While the reform is not very popular in opinion polls, it has been adopted by all major dictionaries and the majority of publishing houses. Short Vowels Long Vowels Diphthongs History of German Orthography Middle Ages Early Modern Period 19th Century and Early 20th Century German Spelling Reform of 1996 Footnotes